Um, hi everyone, this is the community meeting for July 13th of 22. Uh, my name is Daniel. Um, please everyone, um, write your attendance down into the meeting minutes, which I have posted now. So, And first of all, we have the introductions uh, coming up. So now's the time for everyone who is first time visitor of the community meeting to introduce yourself. Um, do we have any, anyone who is new? Would like to introduce yourself? Okay, I guess that's not the case. So, okay, um, as always, I would like to uh, point out that if you need to join the community, we have also links um, from Twitter, from community page, and also um, how to join as a GitHub project member. Um, so first of all, then let's please um, start with the agenda. Um, first point is by David Vossel and the stage is yours, David. Hey. Uh, what did I put down here? Okay, bridge mode for migration. Um, so I, I just caught up on this PR. Hopefully some people from the networking team can weigh in here. Uh, I think my concerns and what I'm, I'm trying to understand here is if we allow migration with bridge mode, um, how dependent on this uh, working is the operating system itself? Uh, is this only gonna work if an operating system understands how to dynamically handle a network device being attached and reattached or, or whatever modes here, or do we feel like this is actually a generic solution that might uh, work across the board? And does anyone on the call feel confident uh, to answer any of these questions? I'm not, I'm not a networking guy. Well, <clears throat> I, I was in the middle of looking at the proposal, so I don't know what, uh, I mean, I don't have a strong uh, answer to what you ask. I think it needs to be raised in the proposal and then to try to answer it. Uh, generally, it looks like a bit dangerous. There are some assumptions there and we need to make sure we are okay with the assumption. Okay. And do we have a, we do have a proposal. I see that now. Uh, so it's actually in the community yeah. directory. Okay. Yeah, there, I, is, there is a proposal and I think Alona started also looking at it. So I think it's in, in like, uh, we are trying to read it and, and let it set in the, in the brain <laughs> little by little. Okay, I will follow up on that proposal then with some of my questions. Um, maybe I, I'll just move on to my next to, um, my next topic since they're kind of related. This Mac VTAP network binding, the same contributor is, um, is trying to get in. Um, this was a long time ago when we were uh, looking at how we were going to tie the, uh, the pod network uh, into the, the VM, and I felt like we looked at Mac VTAP directly without bridge at one point, and I can't remember why we uh, decided not to take that approach. Um, what I'm trying to determine here uh, is even, I don't like the idea of having multiple binding modes that are really similar. Um, if Mac VTAP is, actually more performant than bridge. If there's no drawbacks, uh, I guess I'm trying to understand what, what's the cons of this Mac VTAP binding? Like where are we gonna get ourselves, um, where, where's the complexity lie compared to bridge? Does anyone have thoughts on that? So I guess the most appropriate person to answer it is probably Miguel. But in general, I think there were there are a 
not, I'm not sure which proposal, which which one you are talking about. There are actually, I think there are two today. There is one called, there is one Megvitab that Miguel did like uh, maybe two years ago, something like that, which is the CNI. It's a CNI that is a Megvitab, so you it calls the CNI. I think we are already supporting that. It's it's in our code, and what it does is the top device is provided, I mean, the CNI is creating the, the interface. It, it connects it to, the, to an interface on the host, on the node. And then inside the, inside the pod, we, you get the, the, the part of the, the tap. And that one you bind to Livre. You connect to Livre. So what you get is you don't have the advantage is that you don't have anything like you don't have the bridge and you don't have the vest between the pod and the host. You have only one one hop, I would say, a layer two hop, directly from delivered to the host uh, NIC that, that this MegVTOP is connected to. The disadvantage of it is that uh, you cannot, you cannot, uh, cannot inject traffic or read the traffic that is going on there. So it's like, it's directly connected to the node. You have no, no way to get there. You cannot put a DHCP server, stuff like that. And, but it is much faster, I guess. That's the, okay. the advantage. The, the, so, but there is another proposal, I think. That's maybe this is the one that you are talking about. That is not yeah. magic. The, so maybe just to talk about the first one before the second one. Uh, so with the... Mac VTAP, CNI, um, how would that work with Istio? Or, or would it work with Istio? It will not work with Istio because it's, it's, it, it will not work for, uh, at least for the primary network. It will, it will not work. It can work maybe with, uh, if you have like, if you connect it with secondary network and then it the, doesn't interfere, but for the primary network, if you put that for the primary network, it will not work. But I don't okay. think it is used for the. I don't think it is used for the primary network because that's like uh, the primary network is like it's a it's it's not a CNI, right? It's like or it's like a CNI set for all the cluster. I don't think it's for the primary network. Okay. The second approach, and I just saw the, the contributor joined. I, I don't know your, your full name. Uh, Andre. Andre? Cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to understand. OK, for the second approach, and the, I'm talking about specifically this PR I'll post to the chat. Uh, how does it differ from the CNI plugin? Uh, and why would we keep the bridge binding if uh, this is more performant? Like, what, what's the drawback of this uh, Mac VTAP approach uh, compared to bridge? Or is there one? You did the question to me? Uh, sure. Yeah, if you feel like answering it. Uh, what are you supposed to do? You want to drop bridging? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last thing you said. Sorry, I just joined a little bit later, so I a uh, little skipped um, the conversation. Uh, I don't know, I checked uh, the performance and I found that MacVetup is working um, better. The only problem I see here that it's probably supported some from some specific kernel version, so it might not work in some uh, kernels, some old kernels, I guess. Okay. Hey, this is Fabian. I've, I've got one question. Um, wasn't there a problem with MacVTab that you were not able to speak to the same host when MacVTab is being used? Um, there were some problems, but actually um, the, Mac, the MacVTab proposal I did. Uh, in this way, uh, MacVTab is binding directly to which interface. So it's uh, working the, exactly the same way like you having the pod network uh, without the virtual machine. So there are no any issues answering your question. 
with that. Uh, what the thing you talking about? Uh, you talking about Macvetab Sinai uh, when it is binded to the same uh, to some physical interface? There is this problem, but it can also be solved by the adding um, Mac VLAN interface on the node. For now, we have no any information for that. Or you, I guess you can do that with um, uh, this helper. I forgot how it's called. Yeah. There were some helper for configuring networking for the kubeweird on the host. Okay, so so let me so so I guess one question that should be asked here is if we have the megvitab CNI, why do we need the why do you need the megvitab? Uh, I mean, a different binding for the. I mean. Essentially, this PR, if I understand correctly, it replaces the bridge in the pod with the MacVitab. So instead of a bridge, you have a, you have a MacVitab there, which is like for sure a better performer. So this is a good this question, is yeah. and I can answer it. Actually, uh, MacVitab C9 uh, is provides you interface for binding physical networks. But in case if you want to bind uh, standard CNIs, which we're trying to reuse. Um, we have these options, like you can use Bridge, you can use MacVetup, you can use uh, Masquerade and whatever. And I would say it's two different modes. Uh, it's a little bit confusing because we already have um, MacVetup binding mode in uh, our API, but it is works differently when you're trying to bind some, uh, when you're trying to bind uh, MacVetup C9 or when you're trying to be in some other um, type of CNI. So in first case, it will just pass through the physical device into the um, pod network namespace and will give it to the virtual machine. In uh, case, if you're using any other CNI, it's checking if, if it's uh, not MacVetup interface inside the pod network. Uh, it will just bind it uh, to the VETCH interface and it will work the same way like Bridge right now. So, so the current solution, uh, this PR that is proposed, it will work with also with Masquerade then? Also with Masquerade, this is what you're saying? Uh, so it yeah. can work. Uh, Masquerade is important, I guess, when you want to use KubeWirt with some Istio or something like that. But in case if you need a uh, performance network, I think MacVetup or Bridge will be better, yeah. So, so it, so, but this is the, I think that's the, I don't know if this is the question or not, but in general speaking, you don't need to, it's not necessary that you need a really a different binding. You want to, you want to change the implementation of replacing the bridge inside the pod with a MacVetup. That's like a, a different, different story. Anyway, the, the, I mean, that can be also considered is what I'm saying. What, what, what I wanted to, to say is that I'm not sure if this is anything realistic or not, but one of the properties of a MacVitap or MacVillan is that it goes to handle only a single villain, a uh, single Mac, sorry, in, by, in general. So you, it will not, I think it will not work if inside the virtual machine, the guest, you have like, uh, for example, uh, a bridge there and, or multiple VLANs with different Macs or stuff like that. It will not pass them. It can only handle one Mac, which I think it's in most cases, okay. This limitation, but then that's the, I think that's the, the main difference. I don't think we have hey, any, do we have a I use just, case? Where you yeah. would need multiple, um, well, I'm sorry, um, multiple yeah, Macs associate, associated with a uh, bridge. Do we have that today? Uh, multiply Max, what do you mean? So, so Ed, Edward was just saying that uh, one of the um, difference, differences between um, this Mac V tap and the bridge mode is that the bridge mode could potentially, um, I, I guess you could associate multiple interfaces with it. I, I'm, 
don't think we ever do that. Like, no, no, it's like no, it's like for, let's say let's take a crazy example that you have a, a covert cluster that is, that is running a covert cluster, <laughs> something like that. Like if you have if your guest is has a has a bridge inside the guest and that it has like multiple uh, interfaces there, but they all get out through a single a single interface that that's the the Mac VTAP one. It means that the source Macs can be multiple ones, right? Not only one. You'll get multiple source Mac addresses. So if yeah. you have a guest that implements that part, that thing, you have a problem. I don't know. I don't think we know if there is such a. It's like, I don't. I don't know if we can know if if someone uses it like that. This is uh, this is good uh, thing to think about. <laughs> I would say that um, if you use, uh, anyway, there should be support from the CNI itself. If you're using classic CNIs like Cilium, Flannel, I know, whatever, they having actually the, uh, this check on the, on, on the, on the CNI side actually. So if your virtual machine will send packets from with the wrong MAC address, it will not be routed anywhere. Uh, so the thing you're talking about, if you want to have kubevirt running inside kubevirt, it is possible, but in this way, you still need to use some um, some CNI uh, who is supporting this. Actually, yeah, some it's... CNI bridge and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, that's box spoofing. But box spoofing, I think usually you can, it's some CNIs have some net, it's like not even CNI, it's usually a network provider. They have it enabled by default, but I think it's controllable. But I don't think we will be aware that that's the change. So if you change it, that out of 100, 1,000 users of Kubernetes, one is using it, it will not work for them anymore if we do the, the change. But just to be aware, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, it's so I mean, I like the idea of optimizing to make Vita. It's not that I don't like. One thing that might help me here. Uh, so let me try to repeat back what I think I understood. And <laughs> maybe you guys can uh, tell me if I, my understanding is correct. We're saying that it's possible within the guest, so within that virtual machine, to be using the network devices provided to it uh, in a way that would not work. So we, for example, create a bridge, multiple MAC addresses within the, the guest uh, uh, because of that nested use case we talked about or something like that, that that traffic would not get passed with the Mac uh, VTAP approach. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's true. But I would say, let's stop talking about that because, uh, <laughs> because uh, this thing I did, like binding pod networking using Mac VTAP, it's exactly the same thing. It just replaces bridge mode. So if you would use some standard CNIs and if you will bin the bridge using bridge, you will have the same issues actually because CNI will block the traffic with the wrong, wrong MAC address and with the wrong IP addresses. Okay, perfect. That's why I was, that was my next question. But does Masquerade allow for that? Uh, if we, like with Masquerade with the behind NAT and everything allow passing the traffic? I think it would allow you, but how you are gonna to route traffic into the virtual machine? You still have to have some routing table inside each of your virtual machines. Uh, I would say it's a difficult question. Uh, I would not consider using pod networking for that. I think the pod networking is nice when you need to route some external traffic inside the cluster. Um, but if you want to have some, um, I know, kubevirt inside kubevirt, it's better to use uh, CNIs who, who is providing you layer two connectivity between the virtual machines. Yep. Yeah, but, but so well, one second. If you have Masquerade, it will work because Masquerade, what it does, it will, you will get out with the MAC address of your, of your, of the pod NIC. So it will be only one. So it will work with any CNI that he, uh, does a spoof packing. 
Okay. Yeah, oh, but the only problem of this that you can't reach some uh, other virtual machine on another node because you have to have road inside your original no, virtual you machine. No, you, so let's let's. Uh, so for example, some vendors, including Red Hat, are using it by default. This is the, because this is the only binding. The masquerade binding is the only binding that supports migration of VMI. So if you don't use this. Binding, you cannot migrate the VM VMI. So that's that's how the pod network is working today with the Moscow. But I don't know if this is like uh, I, I I think the only the only thing that can be said here is that if you have in in existing uh, deployment with masquerade, if you have multiple MAC addresses inside your guest that are coming from your guest. It will work with Moscow, it doesn't matter which CNI you use. If you use bridge binding, then it depends on the configuration or which CNI you use. Some CNIs will allow you. Uh, I think most of the CNI uh, by default uh, do the spoofing, but I don't think it's a must. I think it, you can remove it, but that's a different story. Uh, that's it. It's so, a, that's the data. Sorry for jumping in. I just want so. I know that we looked at MacVita many years ago, and there was a reason why we didn't pick it and went with the bridge approach. And I just wonder, maybe we can, maybe Eddie, we can check with Petter. Maybe he recalls why we didn't do it back then. I would just like to understand the history, right? Again, because I mean, MacVita is not new, also not the bridge bending mode, but there was a reason again. And I don't, I don't recall why we didn't do it back then. To me, it would be important to understand that history, but to just make sure that we're not missing anything obvious. I have some theories I, there. It, it might have had to do with um, privileges, and we didn't have an understanding of how to get BERT handler to do things on our behalf. Break, break. It, it had to do with migration. Uh, we couldn't okay. do migration correctly. Hmm. Have you tried MacVetup on Vetch, or you tried that for the physical device? Like uh, MacVetup CNI is doing? Nobody remember. So, okay, so, it was a very so, long time so, ago. We're 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 going so back it, to like 2017. So <laughs> migration, it's interesting. Like if you do a migration, it means that on if you, if the migration is on a different node. Yes, there was there is even today a problem with the make. Uh, there was like a limitation with the make VTAP uh, CNI. When you do if you do migration, then on the target node you'll create a, a new a new MacVitap device, and you will have to set it with the MAC address, the specific MAC address that you're going to have inside your uh, inside your guest. So because the migration at the same time, you have the same MAC, so you may have a problem there, but, but it's, it's like temporary problem. So it, there is a problem with that. You must have the same MAC, and uh, in the target, uh, they will have the same uh, I don't know. It's like it's like when you when you move it to a different node. I think it's a less of a problem if you have it in in the same node, which is not supposed to work like that. But in our, uh, for example, in in kind test with kind, it doesn't work. So there was some complication there, but but I don't see it how it can work uh, if I I can answer you. I tested this case uh, uh, and. Um, I used this um, Mac AM, or I don't know how it. It's like IPAM, but IPAM, but for Mac addresses, like the thing which is assigning Mac addresses for all your virtual machine specs. And in this okay. way, a live migration with the Mac VTAP CNI is working fine. And as about the, this pull request for um, using Mac VTAP for bidding a pod network, that's Actually, problem yes, because you can specify MAC address for the bot, bot networking. And I was thinking about how to solve that. And right now, I'm working on another PR, which will <clears throat> uh, handle the recon reconfiguration for the virtual machine after the live migration is done. It will change the um, it will change the network card if the MAC address is different. And if it's not, it will just do link down, link up to renew DHCP list. 
I think the same approach should work with the Macbeth app uh, if we will use it for the pod networking. So you, you want to change the Macbeth, this is what you are saying. I checked that. I checked that uh, with the bridge, it's work as fine. And I don't see the reasons why it shouldn't work with the Macbeth app in mode. No, no, I mean, again, you are saying that you want to change the Mac model. This is where I don't understand. In the, this is a difference when you, do, because we have two layers. One is the guest and one is the VM and one is the pod. When you do, when the pod will start on the target, it will have a different Mac, right? By different, right? Yes. Okay. Then you so perform you... live migration, and during the live yes. migration, old pod still handling the connections. And after live migration is done, there is a specific handler which is removes the uh, the virtual network card from the virtual machine and attaches the new one with the correct MAC address. So, so you want to... we talked about that earlier, uh, maybe before you joined. Um, I was trying to understand since we're on the topic. That detach and reattach, um, is that going to be guest operating system dependent on how well that is um, tolerated? Uh, do we have um, an understanding of what that does to the guest and what guests are compatible with that? I tested it with the Fedora VM with the cloud unit inside and it was work uh, perfectly. I don't remember actually about the Windows VMs, but I don't. Re I remember when I had the vir Windows in virtual machine, it was always uh, trying to catch, uh, to get new DCP, new IP address from the DCP yeah. when the new uh, adapter get injected. So what would happen to uh, yeah. like a process? Let's say we have a HTTP uh, server in there, and it's it's bound to that network device uh, that we detach and then we reattach a different looking one that's similar. What happens to that process? Would that process fail? It depends, or, yeah. it depends on uh, which IP address is it listening. If it's listening on 000, yep. zero uh, nothing will happen. It will continue handling the connections. And in the case, if it's been to a specific uh, IP address, it will probably not gonna work anymore. Okay, that's what I was trying to get at. So there are some guest considerations and application considerations for this, uh, this mode. So it, it could work if people really know what they're doing and can tolerate that. Uh, but in the general sense, um, it's a little risky for people unless they have a pretty strong understanding of their applications and how they'll behave. Yeah, for that reason, we decided to move it to separate uh, future gate. Makes sense. What's your use case for this? Like, why would you be interested in live migrating with Bridge? Well, uh, we're developing uh, our cloud, cloud platform and we're trying to reuse the things, uh, the hardly reuse all the things we have. And for now, we just implemented Cilium and we like all the things it's bring to us, the policies, they are amazing. And we want to provide the uh, opportunity to live migration uh, for the virtual machines. We also patched the Cilium for uh, having this opportunity to specify MAC address and the IP address for the port. I actually wrote uh, the thing which is called VMI router. It's just adding the routes for um, specific, uh, for example, if you have a virtual machine, you can specify some IP address to this. And when you live migrating, the new port is getting the same IP address, the same MAC address. So when virtual machine is live migrated, we just swap the routes and virtual machine is continue working with this um, IP address with no changes. What's Cilium? Is that what you said? I'm not familiar with that. It sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, please repeat your question. You mentioned a project called uh, Cilium, I believe, is that accurate? Or I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, Cilium, Cilium, C9. Okay, all right, all right, gotcha. Uh, and another thing that um, we were thinking how we can uh, actually route the external traffic into the virtual machines. Uh, for now, it's the only opportunity to do that through the virtual network, uh, through the uh, standard C9 or you can use 
uh, some layer two network, network, but it is not universal solution. So anyway, if you want to communicate with the Kubernetes cluster, we always need to be in the pod network. And we found that um, actually a Mac, uh, sorry, masquerade mode is not so performant, but bridge is not allowing the migration. Uh, it would be nice to have this feature for at least creating some on uh, the routers, which will allow you to pass through uh, external traffic into the virtual machines and then use some MacWet app CNI, for example, to route it inside or bridges. I see. And what's the application running in the virtual machines for you all? Uh, we have no any applications yet. <clears throat> we are a service provider. So we are providing our platform and we want to have an update have an ability to run virtual machines in it. I see. So it would be your customers that have applications on these virtual machines? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, I think I, yeah, thanks for, thanks for answering a lot of these questions. I think the last uh, thing, if we could just maybe focus it down a little bit, was uh, I'm still trying to understand the Mac VTAP binding versus the current bridge binding, uh, the pros and cons of these. If there's, um, is there any con, is there any disadvantage to using the Mac VTAP binding that you're proposing versus uh, the current bridge binding that we have? Actually, I don't know answer. I don't see any cons yet. I don't, I don't either uh, right now. Um, so so I, want, I want one point to be right is that I'm not, I mean, the fact that you, you need or you must uh, shut down or unplug, plug, or put it, uh, link down, link up the interface when you do migration, that is uh, like, uh, can be a killer for some application. So no, really, because with the bridge, that. you have to do the same thing. If you're using no, bridge are, to binding pod networking, you're doing the same thing. No, we are not, this is, we are not. So in, in a regular migration, the leak in the VM is never, uh, is not blinking. It, it can't drop traffic because of the, in the masquerade case, the, the, the NAT table are going to be uh, flushed more or less, but it's like, a, it's a upper layer. It's like the layer three, layer four, we have to refresh itself, but the link itself will not, will not blink. And if, yeah, the, but if you, the link blinks, it has other problems. That's the application. But you problem. asked about the advantages and disadvantages between MacVetup and Bridge. And of course, if you're using uh, MacVetup, yes. there are no changes. Uh, ah, yes, yes. It's only for the migration part, not about the Bridge. Yeah, the Bridge only now, about the multiple Macs. That's a meeting. For now, live migration for Bridge networking is not allowed as well. So, and if we going to accept my PR, which will do, which allow, which will allow doing this, uh, they're they're actually the same thing which should be done for MacVetup and for the bridge as well. You should uh, replace the correct MAC address, or if it in case if MAC address is the same, you just do link down to link up and link up to renew the roads and IP address. Yeah, it seems like the migration case is, is very, very similar. Um, the big thing is we have to force that DHCP, uh, even if the, the MAC address is the same, um, the new DHCP, uh, whatever, request, whatever it, whatever it is. Okay, I think I have the information I need. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing any blockers for this MAC VTAP yet. Um, hmm. And the device, uh, I saw one comment about device using device plugin rather than having, a, it looks like Burke Handler is reaching in to do some device setup. Uh, did you have any thoughts on the device plugin comment? I didn't get this, sorry. <clears throat> so I believe you're, you are using Burke Handler to use that. Um, we have this, this process that can reach into pod to create devices or, or really just do privileged actions. Um, it looks like you're using that to create the, um, the, the device um, inside the uh, compute container. Would 
um, there was a comment about using a device plugin, which is uh, like a Kubernetes concept um, to yeah. handle uh, that device creation instead. Did you have any thoughts on that? Would that be feasible or what? Um, is that even hey, practical? Um, the virtual handler is using um, the binary, which is great, which is called tap device maker. Yep. And actually the creation of the macro tab is done by the same binary. The only thing that uh, it requires to set specific permissions to the C group to allow using this tab device. It works a little bit differently than tab, but common logic is the same. Okay. And still the Mac, uh, still the virtual handler before in bridge mode, it still requires those permissions to create the bridge interface, to connect a uh, virtual interface into this bridge, to create another interface, to connect uh, actually tap and connect this tap to the bridge. Yep. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Well, yeah, thanks for the uh, explanations here. Um, this is, a feel bad that I haven't seen this earlier. Uh, this is all good stuff. Okay. Do you feel, Thank you are for there discussion. any, yeah, are there any blockers that, um, like, what are the points of discussion that uh, are preventing you from being able to move forward here? Um, uh, for now, I'm working on this first pull request, which is allowing you to live migrate in bridge mode. And later, after it will be merged, I will continue working on Mac web app for building uh, the pod networking. Okay. Uh, the only problem I see is that I'm not much familiar with the testing suit. And I know I'm working already second week and there's still some issues. That's actually my question in the open floor. If anybody can help me, I think it's last thing which should be done for make it working. What, in your dev environment, what are you uh, using? What OS? I use uh, Debian. I don't remember which one. Okay, you should be fine. That should work. So, can you create the cluster uh, using um, like make cluster up within our source tree? That's another problem. I have MacBook on M1, and every uh, time when I need I to, to test something. Okay, I was I trying to get it. at that. So you're using a Mac. Yeah, you, it's not going to work. Um, yeah, you're, I'd really uh, encourage you to find a Linux machine to do local development with. It's going to be um, it's, it's a fight, but it's impossible to win. I already managed to run the Kubeweird uh, in actually this building image inside the Q Kubernetes. I think I think I might consider to rewrite the Dockerized. A sage script to run everything inside the Kubernetes, not inside the Docker. And it, this way, I think it might work. Okay. Yeah, so you By need to way, get, another... it, go ahead, Fabian. Yeah, just another thing you could do is get a bare metal machine, but in AWS or Packet to uh, to try it there, right? Then you can install Linux with CentOS or whatever, whatever to bring up the stack there. That's also possible. Yeah, but the question I have, it's really simple question if you will just open the out link from the open floor and there just uh, the mention that the test which is changing kubeweird configuration shouldn't be running in parallel and the, my question is how should I where should I put it or should I enable some feature for not running it in parallel because I just get confused yeah maybe you, you can just, answer you just me. have to put a uh, serial in the name of the test that you're working on. Uh, I'll show you an example real quick. Um, yeah, so just change the name. It's literally, if you search for like grep for- uh, Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw this, I saw this. Uh, it is the name, right. Okay, got it. Look, Thank I you. just put in the chat that uh, in the name and that will make it run in, in serial. Okay, I'll do that right now. All right. I just, I just want to say kudos. I really liked to see that PR about uh, disconnecting the NIC and reconnecting. And just a note, I think for Windows, you need to do it at least like 13 seconds or so to, to get the DHCP client to refresh. 
that might also be interesting because it doesn't um, take that DHCP option to, to request a refresh of the, uh, of the guest. In other words, if the reconnect is too quick, right, then Windows is rather considering it a glitch and not re-requesting um, a new IP address. It's a new device though, I think. Uh, no, 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 there are two different uh, cases. Uh, but yeah, you're right. In um, main case, it's usually be reconnect the device. At least ah. when uh, CNI is not supporting specifying the Mac uh, for the pods. I was thinking to write a cap for Kubernetes, which would allow to do that because there is support from the CNI side, but there is no support for from the Kubernetes side. And every CNI is implementing it different way. Okay. So you can add some annotation. I know a uh, few CNIs who are supporting this. I think there should be some common annotation which would allow you to specify Mac, uh, MAC address for the port actually. And in this way, there will be just link down and link up. In case on link down and link up, we were considering a few options how we can uh, do that other way. Okay, there were options to, to set really short DHCP list. But if I remember well, I uh, saw some uh, DHCP clients who is ignoring this option. So they are just setting this address for infinity lifetime and nothing changes. And another option is to send, um, I don't remember how this packet is called, but there is some RFC for DCP which would allow you to renew the DCP list. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I can say the Windows DCP client does not supporting it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, why, I, why I was mentioning that maybe, you know, they, they make the timeout or the switch time effectively configurable because if for Windows, the, the link, down di link down time is long enough, then it's actually refreshing, right? So if you down the link for, I think it was 13 seconds, but it could be 20, right? And you bring it up again, then Windows is refreshing. So it doesn't look for the DHCP flag. But Are you sure that it's working like that? I'm quite sure, I looked it up a while ago. You looked, and uh, which clients is it? Are they? Oh, the Windows client, right? So the Windows. Yeah. I don't know. I but, haven't tested Windows yet, but yeah, I think it might be configurable, or I know how what we can do in this way. By by the way, because David mentioned it, um, I saying I understood your PR in that way that it's only like link down and link up, but it's the same device, right? Or is the device changing when you do that stuff? Is it just uh, link up and link down, or are you adding a different device? There are two options. If the okay. MAC address of the source of the target port is similar to the source one, so MAC address is not changed, we just do link down and link up. In case if MAC address is changed, like it's usually happening in any uh, CNIs, if you don't specify MAC address annotation for the port, it will reattach the whole device. But the PCI address doesn't change, right? You, you plug it to the same place where you... Actually, I don't know. I just do virtitouch and virtatouch device on the same... Ah. I don't think it changes because you're just mutating the config, uh, the previous config, right? And using the uh, new Mac. Yep. If it goes back to the same controller, it will be the same device. Fabian, we don't oh, hear you. Yeah, so, but it's effectively hot plug, like right? attach, detach is hot plug and hot plug, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool, neat, yeah. And the only thing I want to mention, uh, if you do link down and link up, it's not, it is actually visible from the virtual machine side. Uh, so it will not affect the, I think it will not affect some applications uh, in some cases. Uh, and I like, and I think this is less destructive method than uh, hot plugging the net network card. For that reason, we are considering to use it uh, to attach the MAC address to every virtual machine and do this operation just to update their roles. Because we, yeah, we have this. Um, 
as I told it before, uh, that we have virtual machine with the assigned IP address and MAC address. And when it's live migrated to another node, it's still having the same IP address, but it's need to update the roads inside the virtual machine. So we still need to do link down and link up, even in case if IP address is not changed. Are you, is this like, will it be the default for any bridged, uh, for any bridge binding or are you adding an API to the bridge binding to say, uh, use this new behavior? We use just Cilium for now, and we patched the Cilium to have an ability to uh, specify the IP address oh. and MAC. Yeah, no, sorry. I, I mean, um, when when a VM is using the bridge binding, will any VM with any uh, with will any VM with a bridge binding be using this functionality if the feature gate is enabled, or do you need to specify it on the API to get that behavior? Sorry, I didn't get this. <laughs> okay, um, we have virtual machines. Um, most some of some of them been it through the bridge, and some of them through the I know masquerade or what do you mean? I just wonder when this behavior, the link down, link up, is being used uh, for every bridge binding, or do you make it conditional? Yes, on, for every. Can, can for you every. use it disabled? Okay, okay. So even if you use bridge to bind uh, CNI through the multus, it this behavior also will affect it. Because for example, you can bind the flannel, which is not allowing you to, to migrate the IP addresses from one node to another one. Uh, for now, we are not handling those cases. So the virtual machine will <clears throat> always not working after the live migration. For now, it will handle this link down, link up, uh, approach and it will renew the API list. Interesting. Okay, so I think uh, that was a good wrap up of the discussion. Um, thanks everyone. So. Um, I think we are nearly out of time. So I would skip the pull request that need attention because we don't have any and the mailing list review uh, and give you everyone five minutes back so that we can conclude a little bit earlier probably today. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for your attendance. Thanks for your uh, participation and have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye.